Happen, son.
my poor child. <gasps> yes, I know. Uh, it stings. Oh. Uh. A little patience. Oh. There. Now there's no way over. for us to pay back the loan to Barrett. Then he'll take our land. Barrett's not a wicked man. I'm sure he'll have mercy when he hears what they did to you. Barrett isn't that kind of man, Father. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. No, he wants our land. He owns 8,000 head of cattle that need grazing land. He's already forced out several of the settlers. Why should he show us mercy? When I came here with your mother, nothing grew in this barren, desolate area. Your mother and I, we put our hands in the earth. And for two years, we broke our backs on this land. Nothing seemed to bloom here. It was all dry and arid like the rocks in the mountains. The winters were so cold. Earth froze like rock and nothing grew. And when the sun shone, it blistered us like the fires of hell. Ramon, two hard years, and then the earth awakened. It was like the hand of God. The rain started to come down, pouring. And the fields were green. A miracle, the grain grew and you were born. Your mother is buried in this earth. She spent her last hours working the soil. She died with the hope that you and I would enjoy the fruits of our land. You know that. I won't permit anyone to take away my land. I sweated it out. I worked it. It's my land. Go to bury it. And tell him I'll pay him, Ramon. He's got to listen. Ramon. Do your best, Ramon. They mustn't take the land. Visit the Barrett, Ramon. Come on along, we'll teach him a nice lesson. Taking revenge is no way to get rid of Barrett. What are we supposed to let him do? Let him burn our houses round our ears? Burning their houses will only make it worse. The law will defend us. The law, that's a laugh, huh? The sheriff don't give a hoot, and you know that. We gotta take matters in our own hands if we wanna see justice done. Are you gonna go with us or not? We have to move before he drives us all off our land. No, Stevens, your idea of justice is all wrong. I won't ride with you. What if they burned out your house instead of Johnny Lowry's and killed your pa? No one was killed in that raid. Just pure luck. And they burned out their whole grain store. Why'd you tell the sheriff? He's the one to complain to. You poor blind righteous fool. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to beat some sense into you. He's off, Mac. He still believes in justice. Better learn the law don't exist around here. Because if Barrett's men come in a raid and burn you out, don't come hollering to us because we won't hear you. I'm proud of you, my son. Vengeance is senseless. It only breeds bitterness in the hearts of men. You did right not to go. Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah.
Hey, Bart. There's a paisano here looking for Baron. I come to talk to Mr. Barrett, to him personally. Ha! Ah, see what I see? It's our friend, Ramon. What do you want to see him for, Ramon? It's about paying what we owe on the mortgage. Well, I was... now, did you bring the money? Well, senor, the truth is, I had the money. I was bringing it, but I was robbed on my way here. Look, that's the man, I tell you. He, he's the one who took it. He attacked me, robbed me of the money. All the money I had. You accusing one of my hands. It's the truth, senor. There were four of them. He was the leader. I, I swear he was. Slim, you recognize this peon? Sure beats me, boss. All these peasants look alike to me. But this one says you took his money. I reckon he's too yeller to come here and repeat that little lie. I say you're the one who robbed me. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Slim? You know I don't like violence. Where's your manners? This fool here just accused Slim of stealing the money he was returning to you. That's right. Now, Ramon, I was waiting for you. Now, what's all this about? You He's say the one. somebody robbed you? This man and three others stole the money I was bringing to you. I... Is that true? <laughs> Answer me. You can't believe a swine like that. I give you my word of honor, senor. His mask fell off. I saw his face. But my man says he didn't rob you. No, senor. That's not true. I'm telling you, he jumped me and robbed me of all I had. That's a serious accusation you're making. Could be bad for you if you're lying about this, you know. I'm a man of honor, Mr. Barrett. I was on my way here with the money when... I don't think he could raise the money and invent it, the whole little story. Please, Senor Barrett, only a few days and I do promise you'll get the money. You might have asked first, Ramon, before you start calling my men thieves and liars. Afraid Ramon was a little mistaken. Well, maybe he can use a lesson, Mr. Barrett. <laughs> well, if you change your mind, you still say I stole your filthy money. It was you. You ain't learned your lesson yet. Guess he needs a little more whipping, huh? You're all thieves. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it hurts me more than it does you there, boy. But we're doing it for your own good to teach you manners. You got to stop lying. I'll ask you for the last time now. Who did you say stole those dollars from you? You did, you rotten, filthy coward. <laughs> You want me to beat you within an inch of your life? You made up the whole story, didn't you? I told the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna believe the word of a nobody like you? I say you're lying. Do you hear me? You're lying. Why don't you tell the truth? You're the liar, not me. <laughs> Ready to ride. I'll join you in a minute. Homestead has burnt the encampment at Manor Pass. It's time to stop pushyfooting around. I'm thinking it's time to move fast. How about putting some real pressure you on the guys? You already put the pressure on, Bart. You burnt Lowry's ranch, didn't you? Well, I'd say he deserved it. You want me to use kid gloves on a guy who poisons the water and won't let the cattle through? You know how I feel about this. 
I don't like violence, Bart. Don't put on those fancy airs with me, Barrett. Play the gentleman in front of the others if you want. But don't forget, you and me is equal partners. Yeah, sure, we're partners. I'm not forgetting. But these burnings will only unite the homesteaders, I'm afraid. It might mean a lot of trouble to us, Bart. I want the land. Sure do. But I prefer to use means that are legal. Barrett, you're crazy. If we use your legal means, it'll take years to grab that there land. Watch your old fired hurry, Bart. Stevens is trying to get together all the homesteaders. And once they get ready to I'll move... I'll take care of Stevens. Uh, you see, just using brute force ain't enough, Bart. Sometimes you gotta use the old brain. And what do you think's gonna happen? While you're picking your brains, thinking of legal ways to get the land, every settler in the area is gonna swoop down and burn you All up. All right, there. shut up, Bart. You just keep your mind on the cattle. Get me? Don't get so high and mighty with me. You think you're pretty damn smart, don't you? Because I don't go about all spruced up, pretending to be a fancy dam with the ladies, the way you do. I met you lying in a gutter in El Paso, remember? Without my gun, who do you think would take orders from you? Okay, boys, we're gonna go out and have ourselves a little party. I'd say it's a great day for burning. We'll give those settlers a lesson they're never gonna forget. Let's ride.
Howdy, Django. It's been quite a long time, hasn't it? That's a fact. <laughs> you cost as much as you used to? No. I cost more. <laughs> I'll buy. I've got a job that's right up your alley. It won't be very easy, but the pay is good. Before except, who gets it? I said, who gets it? Bart. But Bart will cost more. You push a hard bargain. There's a job for 10000 in a month. That's a lot of money. Who do you want me to kill? The governor? Nah, he's much less important. But he's worth that much to you, huh? Important enough to bother to call you in. You don't have to tell me. But why wait a month? I could do it now. Better to let the air sort of calm down. I want these hotheads here to simmer down a little bit. That killing now would only stir things up. I'm a patient man. I can wait for what I want. Hmm? You better put in another thousand or my pistol don't work. <laughs> All right, Django. I'm trusting you. This is just between us. Nobody will know anything about it, don't you worry. I'll tell you who the man is when we meet again in a month. And I warn you, this job isn't an easy one, Django. Murdering a man is never easy, Mr. Barrett. Yeah, but you're getting paid good, aren't you? And don't you forget it's me who's calling the shots. The shots you call, you pay for, so don't waste your fire, Barrett. Pretty lucky with them sevens. This is the fifth time it's come up for you. Mister, you calling me a cheat? Oh, nothing of the sort, sir. I just mean you're mighty lucky. <laughs> you ain't seen much of my luck yet. <laughs> come on, let's roll them dice. Who's covering the bet? Ain't anyone covering the bet? makes me vomit. Ain't nobody but drunken pigs around here, right? And I say the drunken pig here is you. It'd be a real pleasure to roast you over a fire, a hot one. Now stop it or I'll send for the sheriff. You just make tracks out of here. Why don't you keep out of this, little lady? You ain't nothing but Barrett's gal. And that don't mean I gotta listen to what you say. And you better be careful how you talk, Bart, or I'll tell Barrett. Make me laugh, you do. You and that cream puff, Barrett. He don't scare me none. I'm a big boy. And no one orders me around, you hear? You'll pay for that, you tramp. Don't think you won't. You're gonna be sorry. Easy there, Bart. I don't believe Barrett would take much to you talking a lot like that. Barrett, Barrett, Barrett! As big a phony as this cheap harlot. You thought you'd become a lady, didn't you now? You left Ramon and you're still in the gutter. What's going on here? Who's been shooting? <laughs>
Nobody wants to talk, huh? All right, but the next time this happens, I'll throw the lot of you in jail. I'm quitting now. Rum. Wouldn't be fair now, mister. I'm losing. But I've lost $600. Well, my friend says he's losing, mister. Don't you hear good? I'm the one who's low man here. Oh, it ain't like a gentleman to abandon a game when he's winning. These dice are loaded, dirty skunk. I guess you all saw him. I shot this man in self-defense, should anyone ask about it.
How bad is he? He's got a bullet in his shoulder. You know who he is? Yes. Please take him away with you. He doesn't belong here. He'll be blamed for sure. Please help him. This is the first time anyone's done me a favor. I'll take care of him. Don't worry. Send them back to you, safe and sound. What's going on? A visit from the angel Gabriel. That's about all. Caught a bullet, and it's pretty nasty. I'll have to cut it from you. It's not going to be any picnic, I warn you. Have some coffee, make you feel better. Have it your way. What's your name? Cat got your tongue, huh? You talked loud enough when you were trying to kill that man. A word of advice, Chico, before you speak, pull the trigger. And that way you don't warn your enemy. Not speaking at all is even better. You'll find your voice in a minute. Huh, Chico? Hey, Chico. It's more difficult to extract a slug. Target. At least for men like me.
ready to go on your way soon, I reckon. Your girl's waiting for you. Hey, Chico, you lonesome for your gal? What's her name? I don't know. She's mighty pretty. I guess all the young bucks are after her now. I used to know a girl like the one you have. For a dollar, she'd give you almost anything you wanted. She had a boyfriend like you. Darn beautiful girl. He was a pretty quiet boy, never said much. Everyone thought he was crazy. Because he didn't listen. What happened was he fell in love. And that's the truth, Chico. The honest truth. Anyway, he decided he was going to get married to this little girl. He was as innocent as they come. Whenever this filly would go with another man, the kid would grab up a rifle. Say he wanted to murder. <laughs> and so they were wed. And while the lunkhead was working, his little girlie would sleep all day with every guy in town. She charged a dollar, one silver dollar. Stop it! Hey, Chico, it'll be okay. Better get a good night's sleep. Don't think about it. Girls are all alike. Well, Chico, you going? All right, boy. We're even then. Been nice meeting you. Hey, Chico! Where are you heading to? Well, come back. here with me for a while. Just don't sit around like a mummy. Huh? If I remain, there's something I want to learn. Well, what do you want me to teach you? To be what you are.
First thing you gotta learn is never empty your gun all at once. Never shoot more than five shots. That way you've always got one in reserve. Keep your feet spread apart. It'll give you better balance. Learn to aim slow and steady, like this. Go ahead. A bit low. Go high. Now! <laughs> the first bullet hits the mark or you're dead, Chico. A bottle can't hurt you. Don't shoot back. But a man is different. You'll be in trouble if you don't get him with the first shot. Remember, time runs out after the first bullet, Chico. I wouldn't have thought that you liked music. It's relaxing, Chico. There was an old man I knew when I was a kid. Every night at sundown, he used to walk along the road singing. Where was that? Oh, it's near the Pacific. And it's a mighty pretty land. Plan to return? In 15 days, when I've about wound things up here, I'll be on my way. What is it that keeps you here? There's a job I have to do before I go. It'll be the last. What kind of work? It's not for you to ask. It's nothing but a job. And it pays pretty well. All I'm interested in is getting the dough so I can go back to hear the old man singing at sundown. Susie <laughs> gal. Come over here. Sit down. Have a drink. Make it a small one. Don't be a wise guy. How come we don't see Mr. Barrett? Don't you worry about it, Paquito. Barrett never announces his arrival, nor does the angel of death. But they come. And if you ever repeat that, I'll fire you, hmm? If I join your table, gentlemen, playing low, yeah, that suits me. Boys, ever since poor old Bart got killed, this place ain't been the same. Too bad, huh? Ain't no one missing him, Mr. Barrett. I'm betting Bart's no loss to you, neither. He was a friend of mine, sir. He was rotten. Well, I'm sure that everything's going to turn out for the best. If we all cooperate a bit, nothing will stop us from turning this valley into a real... Paradise on Earth. Don't be silly. <laughs> I want you to know that I've come to love the land. I get real pleasure just watching the crops come up. I'm just a simple guy. I want to talk to you. Will you excuse me? One moment, Jess. 
Just a simple crook. Land that belongs to others. That's what he loves. The first and only commandment. Don't try to steal land that ain't your own. Or you might end under it. <laughs> <laughs> scared? I'll get too good for you? Don't be so cocky, Chico. When you hold a gun in your hand, what do you think you have? A weapon. <laughs> no, Chico. It's only an excuse to get your head blown off. A gun is absolutely worthless unless you know how to use it. I'm learning. How to shoot. That's not enough. Let's say this stone is you. This one's your opponent. You stand facing each other, two equal men. You each got a gun. You each have six shots. You've got to draw. Whichever one of you has the sun behind him has an advantage right off. Because with the sun behind you, you can see your opponent stand out sharp and clear. And also, the man facing the sun has got it glaring in his eyes. Watch your shadow, Chico. If you see it in front of you, you can shoot. If you don't see it, walk slow. Look for it. While you're walking, you've got to run your tongue over your lip. If you feel it's cold on one side, the wind's to that side. Now, if it's cold in front of you, the wind's coming right at you. And that's bad. It slows down the speed of the bullet. What if it's on the side? You've got to do a little figuring. If it kicks up the dust, the wind's low and strong. You see the leaves fluttering, the wind's high and weaker. And what's your way of calculating? I wear my hair long. I can tell by the way the wind blows it. By now it's instinctive. You get to be like a wild animal. Life becomes only a matter of survival. You learn to kill or be killed. Your senses have to be so sharp that they'll react automatically to every single sound and movement. What made you be that way, Django? When someone's out to kill you, you darn well better learn faster. Or else, boy, you're dead. Like I said, your instincts take over and you become an animal. You have to. Or you don't stand much of a chance. Take a puma, for instance. You know how it hunts. It begins by looking around. It moves real slow at first. When it finds the scent, it crouches and moves. Why? To test the wind. The minute it feels it on its nose, it crouches. The wind carries the scent of the animals to him. When he picks up the scent he likes, he moves fast, always keeping downwind. That way, his victims can't smell him until he's pounced. Remember this, Chico. The man who has the strongest will to live is always the one who wins the battle. How do you pass the time before you kill a man? <laughs> I give myself a shave. You see, when you... Find a man who's concerned that much about his looks, it means he's mighty anxious to stay in one piece. And you're a man who wants to live. Yes. We're not the same. I don't care if I live or die. Let just be to your advantage. You can become a great killer. Make yourself a lot of money. Sort of like a machine. It's not money I want. Maybe you've got a girlfriend you'd like to stay alive for. I don't. <laughs> You're smarter than I thought. Women are strange creatures. No matter what they might say or do, you never know what's going on inside of them.
Something you ought to know, Chico. When you kill your first man, a wall goes up in front of you. A wall? A wall between you and the rest of the world. Society will build a wall between you and it. They'll respect you. They'll be afraid of you. But you'll never be one of them again. I don't care. I thought that way once. And then comes the day you realize that the life you really want to be part of is on the other side, but that wall. Seems you're getting old and tired. Perhaps you're right. You see, it's really a dog's life, this being always alone, expecting death to pounce from every corner. Funny, you're the only friend I ever had, Chico. Maybe I never wanted one before. Are you sure I'm your friend? Yeah, just like you're sure of me. You're getting careless, too. Now, what about the work you have to do? Do the job first, and maybe later you can think of friendship. You taught this to me. I'm teaching you now. So you are, Chico. I almost forgot. When you're a killer, friends don't exist on your side of the wall. You've got to learn to ride alone forever. When you kill your first man, remember that, huh? Tear that soft belly apart. Pretty tough cook. Suppose you give it a try. Orders are orders. Stop it. Stop it, I tell you. What's all the fuss about? Cut it out. I said hold it. Come on, cut it out. He attacked one of my men and he wasn't even armed. You're a filthy liar. He jumped me from behind. Uh, you're carrying a gun, but he's not. How about that? Look here, Sheriff. My men are sick of this constant provocation. If Stevens continues to aggravate the situation, I warn you, they're going to get out of hand. You dirty... You hold it. Now I warn you, both of you. If you don't cut out this feudin', you'll both wind up in the clink. Don't talk nonsense, Sheriff. If anyone deserves to go to the Who Scout, Stevens. He's a yellow-bellied pig who attacks unarmed men. You think you're pretty slick, don't you, Barrett? We had a truce, and I respected it. But if you want war, me and my men are ready for it. You'll get what you deserve, you murdering thief. Come on, Stevens. A few hours in a clink will cool you off a bit. Come on, move! <laughs> Fine, Ramon. You learn well. Now you can handle the gun. I'm pretty good, huh? You are pretty good. So good, I just might challenge you to a duel. You want to test me again? No, Chico. A real fight. If you succeed in killing me, you're ready. No, Django, I might just kill you. <laughs> All right, Chico. You gonna fight or are you chicken? 
No. <laughs> this is for real, Chico. If you get the chance, you better kill me. You were lying. You want to live, you don't want to die. If you die, that girl can find a hundred guys as good as you. You'll be doing her a favor, getting your fool head blown off. Have it your own way. I promise you'll be killed. I wouldn't be too sure. So we're all set. It's either me or you. Over here. <laughs> Go on, why don't you murder me? Oh, you mustn't get too cocky, my little friend. Remember, you gotta count to six. If you haven't got a bullet left, how do you expect to kill a man? It's mathematics, Chico. You've got to count. Always count. You gotta count your steps. You gotta count your shots, your own shots and the other guys. Count, Chico. Never stop counting. Count the minutes. There's not a man alive can keep a pistol in his hand more than three minutes without his hand beginning to shake. If your hand shakes, you've had it. Count, Chico. Never stop counting. If your opponent takes one step and stops, he's afraid. If he takes two, he's undecided. If he takes three, he's ready to kill you. Why are you doing that? When this bullet hits something, the lead flattens out and makes a hole like a can. With a shot like that, you're bound to kill a man. What do you have to do? Who are you going to have to kill? I don't know. I don't know the man. Tomorrow I do my last job here. Then I retire. What do you mean? I told you already, Chico. I want to go back to where I was born. Buy a house, marry a girl, have one or two kids. And if the old man still walks down the road playing his mouth organ at sundown, I'll ask him to come into the house. I'll talk to him. I'll tell him to sit a while. You've done a lot of walking. Maybe you'd like to just rest. He had to sit down once in a while. Every time I saw the old man, he was walking. He never sat. That old guy is you. 
You just want to cross that wall you were talking about. What's it to you? Never mind. I was only joking. Why do you suppose I wanted to learn to use a pistol? That's easy enough. You want to kill someone. But who? Aren't you interested? Maybe yourself, the kid you once were. I've seen all sorts of men die. It doesn't bother me anymore. But I'm afraid for you, Chico, you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble using a gun. I'll remember to count. Don't be afraid. I'm sorry I can't do much for you, Chico. But there is one thing I can do, though. Here, keep the razor sharp and don't cut yourself. Thanks. Don't forget to shave, boy, because the man who takes care of himself stays alive. Try to hit it. If you do, it'll be good for your morale. If you don't, you'll never know it because the hole is already there. Good luck, kid. Hey, that means it wasn't even your bullet. Wouldn't you like to know? Life is an illusion, Chico. What's important is to believe that it can be done. Adios. I just saw Ramon. Ramon? He was here? Who is this Ramon? You have forgotten Ramon. That's strange. He remembers you very well. He was here for only one thing. He wants to kill you. He wants to kill me? Uh, why? You ask him. It looks as though he'll be hanging around. I think you'll find he's patient. I don't get you at all, Lola. Come on, give. What do you know? You were just a little too rough, Barrett. Now you have no other choice. You must kill him. You'd be doing him a big favor. Or he might just kill you instead. That's almost too much to hope for, though.
you can thank Barrett that you're getting out of here. He asked me to let you go. And he gave me his word that he'd do his best to avoid any more fighting between you. The whole thing smells fishy to me, because Barrett's no angel. I wonder what's behind it. You're too suspicious, Stephen. And you're kidding yourself. Barrett's got only one thing in mind, to take the land away from the settlers any way he can. A word of advice, Sheriff. I wouldn't give any help to that there pig. for a $1,000 reward for the killer of this man. Ramon, Barrett said you want to talk to him. I'll speak to him personally, not his errand boys. You'll talk to us. Right. Ah! Ah! You a mite early. How much do you want to do one more job for me, huh? Another one? <laughs> you raining down judgment on the sinners of the world? It ain't no joke. I'm dead serious, I tell you. What do you want? Nothing. My work is finished. This one will be the finish, I promise you. I'm real sorry, but I told you I wasn't going to do any more jobs for you. I'll make it worth your while, Django. I'll give you 10,000 more than that you couldn't ask for. All right, I'll make it 15. My final offer, 20,000. Who is it? His name is Ramon. You'll 
You'll find him in a half-burned house near the edge of town. You can't miss it. I'll bet it was you who burned it, no? Will you do it? Okay, I will. Yeah. I'll meet you here with the money tonight. You'll find me here. Adios. See, when you find a man who's concerned that much about his looks and means, he's mighty anxious to stay in one piece. Working for Barrett? And it was him you wanted to kill. That's not your affair, Django. I'm a professional, Ramon. When I'm paid, the job gets done. What do you got against Barrett? You said it yourself, Django. I want to kill the kid I once was. Take my horse, Chico. Make tracks. And don't come back here ever. When a man hates Django, there's nowhere to run to. You'll forget Barrett before you know it. You want to return to where you were a child. Well, I grew up here, and I'm going to stay. If you're making it rough, Ramon. If you stay here, you're a dead man. Remember what I said about keeping the sun at your back. Count, Chico. One, the man's afraid. If it's two, he's undecided. If it's three, he's prepared to kill you. But I shaved, Django! <laughs> Django. Chico, you made it. Guess I was a pretty good teacher. Now you're standing in front of that wall. It's been waiting. Better not try to climb it. You can't.
morsel for you. How are you? I'm excellent. Well, McRae, what's your decision? You win, Barrett. I'll sell. Good, Mac. You're being wise. Come on into the office and we'll talk a little about price. Barrett! Barrett! You're a dead man, Barrett! What are you guys waiting for? Get him! Stay back. Ramon! Ramon! Hold it! Throw your gun down! You stay out of this, Sheriff. It's between us. Sheriff, don't just stand there. The man's a crazy killer. What do you want, Ramon? I want to kill Barrett. You mustn't, Ramon. I beg you. But what's he done to you that deserves killing? He's a murdering coward. He killed my father. It's not true. I swear it. It was Bart who did it. Bart killed for you, Barrett. You had him killed the same as Stevens. You know who killed Stevens? Ask Barrett. He knows it all. If you know anything, say it, Ramon. It's up to the law to arrest him. I've got a job to do, Sheriff. First, this dirty rat is going to die by my gun. Django's come back, Barrett. But this time to get you. <laughs> Ramon! Ramon! Who's this Django? The man you were talking about. Just a man, Sheriff. Just a man. Kill your first man, a wall goes up in front of you. A wall between you and the rest of the world. Society will build a wall between you and it. I respect you. I'll be afraid of you. But you'll never be one of them again. <laughs> <laughs> 